Next. All right, what's your name, honey? I'm Barbara Z, and I'm innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. yeah. Is that her? Oh, my God. Yes, yes, it's her. It's that crazy Yenta. That's it. We got it. Bust it. Hi, it's Barry Z from the Barry Z Show, live from the Iridium, talking to this unbelievable, talented woman. I mean, it's you I'm talking to. Oh, okay. Rain prior. Hi, thanks for wow. talking to me. This is I hope awesome. it always rains on my parade. I want it to. Let's do Please. this. <laughs> and I won't use an umbrella. Right? Ooh, dangerous. Now, what is the show here called tonight? Divorced, dangerous, and devilicious. At the Iridium. At the Iridium Jazz Club in New York City. How did this come about? You know, I have always grown up around music. My grandfather was Danny Kaye's manager, and this what? Yeah. Herbert Bonus was Danny Kay's, my grandfather, was Danny Kay's manager. So I grew up around the big band, that type of comedy, everything. And I always wanted to be that. But as I was growing up, that stuff kind of disappeared, <laughs> you know. And so it's, it's a love of mine to sing jazz and blues and standards. And you did it all here tonight. To funny. Oh, you were everything plus. <laughs> I laughed, I cried, Same. I yelled, I screamed, I have no voice left <laughs> to talk to you. That's beautiful, thank you. Wow. Right? That's the dangerous part of the dangerous. See, now divorce, it, dangerous. Okay, define the title again. So, divorce, divorce, dangerous, because afterwards you get a little like, right? And then you get delicious where you're like so empowered with yourself. Wow. Right? And you just go out there and get it. Now, <laughs> are you a virgin to this club or what? Am I a virgin to this club? No, this is my second time. They brought me back. So this was my second time here. And you told me tonight that you're leaving and going to L.A. I am. I got, oh. you know, I got to spread my wings. Please don't leave. Pretty know, please. I'll get right. on my hands and knees and beg. Right. Give me a lead in a Broadway show. Okay. I might stay like the old days, right? Let's build a barn and put on a show. You know something? You're more <laughs> Jewish than I am. I'm sorry. I grew up. Hello. Hello. Hello right. Right. Now you're half Jewish and I love you. You're half Jewish and half black, right? Yes. Last time I checked, yeah, it was all in there. Well, am I half Jewish and half I black? Think, I think it's you. I think you're right. <laughs> right. And I know one thing. I want to be like you when I grow up. Oh my God, I want to be like you now. Thank this you. is awesome. Can we switch for just for a day? Oh, absolutely. Right? Tell me about the songs you sang in tonight's show. Well, tonight, you know, it's it was it was actually songs that kind of told the story. So it starts with the, you know the divorce. Like all I could do was cry because you've. Someone has a new lover, I know, right? Um, my funny Valentine to everything must change because that's what happens in life. We grow and and we learn new things about ourselves in our life. And I just, it's, yeah. There were more songs. Come on, tell there us. There were more songs. So there was, um, there was, uh, 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 what songs? <laughs> I'm like, what did I'm you just start out with? I start off with Stormy uh, Monday. Stormy Monday, uh, Day in the Life of a Fool. Um, uh, come rain or come shine. You gotta have a rain song in there, right? Oh, absolutely. Right? Because I'm gonna love you like nobody loves you. Come rain or come shine. Um, <laughs> uh, my funny uh, Valentine, I Found a Boy, which is actually an Adele song. I did an original song that I'm working on for an album I'm getting ready to record. So, um, in New Orleans. In New Orleans, I know. Isn't that crazy? So I heard every some word. The best music. You did. You really listened to like with some of the best. New Orleans has some of the best musicians, and um, so I'm really excited about that. So I did an original song, "Bridge Over Troubled Waters." Um, uh, like I said, my funny Valentine. I don't even know. I think I left out one song. Am Tell I us song? all, because I think we taped some of them. Oh my God! Um, 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 I need my list, Jerry. Um, <laughs> I wish my bandmate didn't walk off. Um, Day in the Life of a Fool, My Funny Valentine, uh, Come Rain or Come Shine, All I Could Do Is Cry, uh, Stormy Weather. That's oh. what I left out, Stormy Weather. So. Wow. Yes. Incredible. Thank Yeah. And 
to the States. Just, you might be my next one. Just as that. Well, they call it stormy, stormy Monday. And Tuesdays, just, just as bad. Wednesdays are worse, because he probably hasn't called. And Thursdays leave me feeling, oh, oh, so sad. Well, the eagle flies on Fridays, Saturdays, I, I go out to play. Yes, I said the eagle flies. Good songs coming up. Uh, Twice though. All right.
going on and on. It feels so dramatic. Because after all, that song was a little dramatic, I admit. <laughs> it was fun. He always says, I hope you're not talking about me on stage. I said, well, you shouldn't have fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> but then see what's so funny, so as you go through this process, so divorce twice, and you start to change your life, you start to look at things, and me, I have a kid who happens to be very smart, and she says she's going to sleep with me until I find somebody, and um, yeah, because she feels she wants to take care of me, which I think is awfully sweet, but no, and um, I've, I've, I come into this place now where all of a sudden I'm kind of feeling, you know, you get a little dangerous, you know what I mean, like, I want to be kind of like those girls, like, I would love to be that girl, actually, that could sleep with whoever and not care if you call me. Um, but I do. I have it. I think I sit by the phone, but you will never know it because it's my phone. And, and I wonder, like, what are you doing that you haven't called yet? But, um, and then I move on and watch Game of Thrones and I feel so empowered. <laughs> so things change. So this next song, um, kind of, I think, kind of is like me a little. <laughs> she gets too hungry for dinner at eight. She likes the theater but never comes late. She'll never bother with people she hates. That's why this lady is a train. you imagine uh, to take these songs and sort of weave them together? 
I literally, actually, what happened was I, I was going through a divorce, and I literally listened to the music on the, on the radio, like I was listening to a station, and I started just to write down names of songs. It literally came like that, wow. and then I was like, "Oh, this could be a set list." <laughs> you are a genius. I, yeah, right? Thank you. I like to think that, but not. <laughs> thank Besides you. being one of the most beautiful women I ever seen or met in my life. Why are you so nice? Can I take you with me everywhere? Yes, I want to be everywhere. You're awesome. You. You're gorgeous. Thank you. Inside and out. Thank you. And you blew this place <laughs> apart tonight. You're wonderful. Oh, How much God. did they pay you to say all that? Nothing. <laughs> but I have no voice right. left from yelling and screaming. See, I did love that. Did you hit those high notes? I did wow. hit them. I know, right? Wow, like my mom would say, up from your public to your head. <laughs> See, this marriage of you and I could work out because right. I'm Jewish and so are you. See, it could. Yeah, wow. Right? Now, how many kids do you have? I only have one, an eight-year-old, beautiful. Who sleeps in the same bed with you because she loves mommy so much. Right, and she said, until you find a man, I'm sleeping with you. <laughs> Isn't that would you consider me a man? Yes, I would. Good, okay. <laughs> so she's going to have to move beds. Right. <laughs> So this is the most incredible show. Right. Thank you. I know you from an off-Broadway show you did. I hit off-Broadway show right. called Fried Chicken and Latkes. Yes, that I did. Yeah, the first time I think um, was at 45 Bleecker Street. Yeah. Then I did it um, about six, seven, eight years later up at the um, at um, the Actors Temple, and then oh, did wow. a um, an actual Equity run of it at um, the National Black Theater in Harlem. So where is it now? I'm not doing it now. I'm now doing this. I'm now doing this. Like Can't I'm you do both. I could do both. I could. How did you come up with the name? And what was the show about? Fried, Fried chicken, chicken and Fried Chicken Lakas is growing up black and Jewish during the late '60s, '70s, '80s, and a reflection on today's today's signs of racism and what's and what's going on. It's just a reflect. Even though it's my life, it's not. Um, it, I mean, it is about Rain Pryor. My dad's in it, but it's not Richard Pryor. But it's not a tell all I don't know how to you know what I mean it's an more expose reflective. yeah it's not yeah it's it's a reflective of of the times in that era amazing thank you what era are we talking about you know the 60s 70s the racial era like you know peace love and then let me knock you out for being different than I am now, what's so incredible about you you're not only gorgeous yes. on the outside wow. on the inside <laughs> with a fantastic you, I really style. want to take you with me oh with a fantastic smile <laughs> and style thank you okay you're radical I heard I am a little bit. I'm, I'm an activist. I mean, I, I spent the last 11 years living in Baltimore, becoming really involved in the community. And especially during when the riots happened, I was very vocal about it. And I actually was friends with the mayor for, the, for a while. Wow. And so I kind of spoke out against her, even though like I could still see her and say hi. I wasn't ashamed of what I said because I feel change starts with us. And it starts with owning a sense of, of bringing our community together as grownups. That's our job to do that, not the kids' jobs. Why don't you ever run for mayor or president? I may. Like Hillary. One, I, do you know I may one day? I just don't want to be sucked into like all that Michigas. But I do want, I do want change. You know, I don't know if I'm like Bernie Sanders. I don't think I'm an Obama, but I think I'm somewhere in that middle. You're gonna vote for Hillary, right? Well, she's the nominee. Yeah, <laughs> right. I'm not gonna vote for what's his face. Uh, Trumped. <laughs> Dachau. <laughs> now let me ask you a question. How did you get that fantastic name, Rain? My parents uh, were smoking a joint, were high, and it was raining out. <laughs> That's, That's literally so that, right. And I would have been named if I was a boy reason. or girl. I would have been named Rain. I tell everyone it's because my because my mom thought I was going to grow up to be a stripper, but that's not true. What a fantastic name. Thank you. What was it like being the daughter of Richard Pryor, who I love from two movies, uh, especially, you know, that, that I, I loved more than my life, I think. Oh, I don't you know, being his daughter was amazing. My dad was an amazing, amazing man. And yes, were there the, you know, yes, there was just... He, was a, he wasn't there all the time. There was drama. But when it came down to it, my dad came to every school show I ever had. My dad was, my first marriage was able to be there for it. So he was present in so many ways. He taught me how to fish. He taught me how to be independent. He, and he taught me always speak the truth. And so you can't buy that. Incredible man, Richard Pryor was. He really was. He really, really was. Not only funny. 
right? But personal, people loved him. Like, people don't realize how loving he really was. He never had, you know how, like, you see celebrities now and they kind of have that air? My dad never had that. Wow. And it's kind of cool. What are your favorite Richard Pryor movies? Lady Sings the Blues, oh, Live on the Sunset bad. Strip, oh. yeah, and, um, and uh, Busting Loose. You've changed You're not the angel I once knew They sparkle, they bubble Gonna get you in a whole lot of trouble But don't take too much Mama may have Diana Ross is dazzling in her dramatic film debut as Billie Holiday in Lady Sings the Blues. That's got his Hers is the story of a child becoming a woman. A woman becoming a lady. Who does she think she is? A lady. With a hell of a boy. You want my arm to fall off? A lady becoming a legend. You're mean to me. Why must you be mean to Diana Ross is Billy Holiday, the lady who sang the blues and lived them. One shot and you'll be flying. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're thinking. I'm not here. Oh. I'm the one who said you get and I'm taking you back, back home. You ain't gonna get anything from me. I mean, not run under his nose. You affect my whole life. I love you. If you go on, baby, I'd, I'd go down too. You know, you can't fight it when you're hooked and you are hooked. <laughs> You'd kill me for it, wouldn't you? What's the difference if I say I love you? When I go up to my car, my knees someday. I need you. Diana Ross adds brilliant new dimensions to her career as actress and artist in a performance that comes from the heart and reaches the soul. Lady Sings the Blues. That's a word that's used to describe our own wretchedness. And we perpetuate it now because it's dead. That word's dead. We men and women, we come from, we come from the first people on the earth. <laughs> you know, the first people on the earth were black people. Because anthropologists, white anthropologists, so the white people go, that could be true, you know. Yeah, Dr. Leakey and them found people remains five million years ago in Africa. Richard Pryor is Joe Braxton. He's an ex-con. You know what I was in prison for, Joe? What? what? Murder. What? With a mean parole officer. I'm gonna burn your butt on this one, man. Braxton's bad. Stop the bus! Shut up! Uh, she fires the stop the bus! 
I don't like your attitude. So what? I mean, he's <laughs> really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Busting loose. Big money changes hands back there. Action out here, too. Some big money could change hands there, too, huh? Richard Pryor. You fool! And Cicely Tyson. <laughs> Busting loose. Don't forget it. Try me one time, you understand? Get me working on the mother. Richard Fryer and Cicely Tyson in Bust and Loose from Universal. No, Silver Streak, of course, we love that. What about The Wiz? I know, right? He was amazing oh. as The Wiz, wasn't he? Oh. <laughs> like, my daughter just saw The Wiz and she was like, that's Grandpa! Oh. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. And good luck. The genius who created me only took care of my dashing good looks, my razor sharp wit, and my irresistible attraction to the wrong women. What he forgot was a hunt. A lion without any courage. Oh! Can you help us, sir? What's in it for me? We'd be very grateful. <laughs> yuck, 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 yuck. There it is. movies did he make he i think dad made about 40 films 40 films so yeah yeah and, and he uh, even made some that some people didn't see really yeah like i i mean i think you can still get them like somewhere Which on one? ebay 
There's um, how about the toy or the toy? Oh, the, that's a terrible movie. Although I'm friends with Scott Schwartz, but I look back on, I think it's a terrible movie. What but was the title then? The toy. The toy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there was um, Watt Stacks. My dad was. Oh, I was actually I right. He was actually in Watt Stacks. Um, he wrote a movie called The Three Musc- <laughs> Muscatels. <laughs> a terrible movie. <laughs> Which way is up? Wasn't very popular. Up in that? smoke. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, right? And smoke was his too. Yeah. Oh, uh, with Cheech and John? No, no, it was a different up in, I think it was, some. yeah, it was a different up in smoke because it was at the Wawa. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was called up in smoke or smoke something, but there was smoke in it. <laughs> yeah, I know. In that era, everything well, was smoke, right? You made a very distinct career of your own being ahead of the class. I did. Thank you. Yeah. That Tell was me about that show. Well, it was really interesting because I auditioned for that show when it was first being done in high school and I didn't get the part. It went to Robin Givens, which is funny. And then I'm graduating high school. I don't have an agent. And this beautiful woman named Ronnie Yeskel, who went off to be kind of famous as an agent and per- writer person, wow. sent me to an agency that sent me to whatever. And I auditioned and made up my own character. And that's what they put in the show. They said the like, class. Yeah, they said we want to write this character, and would you do oh it? God. Based on a rap I did, I rapped. I was like the first, you know, you man. Were a rapper, rapper, huh? No, before like ha- ha- you know Hamilton. Before Hamilton, right? You I were a Broadway rapper. rapper. Yeah, I was a Broadway rapper before that, but I wasn't charging eight hundred and fifty dollars a ticket. Ah, yeah, <laughs> right? Um, believe, but it's amazing. Come on. Wow, I know. Right. Where was <laughs> head of the class filmed? It was filmed in Burbank Studio. No, oh, it took place in New York. Angeles. We were supposed to be in New York, but it was in L.A., right? Because everything's fake in L.A. <laughs> now, if I want to go to bed with you tonight, yes. okay. can I rent some movies of yours? Call 1-800-526-6262. Can I rent Rude Awakening? You can. I think Showtime, I think they have it. Or I have a documentary, That Daughter's Crazy, that's out, which is about my life and my and my show fried chicken and latkes that's won all these Jewish festival awards <laughs> and stuff yeah what with that title fried chicken and latkes I you know what I really have no idea other than it made sense fried chicken you know oh. and latkes and that's what I cook for Passover oh. I combine both foods will you marry me please because one day I, we can open up the restaurant I want to open I want to open up a Jewish soul food restaurant called Pryor's Place I love it right so Not people fried can come chicken and latkes no you'd have that on the menu though <laughs> So you made Rude Awakening. Yes. What else did With you make? Lynn Rengrave. I was in Head of the Class, Rude Awakening. I was in uh, Battle of the Network Stars. <laughs> oh, my God. With Scott Bayo of all people. Wretched, wretched man. Who knew? I never would have done it. Um, <laughs> what movie was that? No, I mean, Battle of the Network. It wasn't oh, even a movie. Battle the Battle of the Network yeah. Stars. Yeah, I did Movie Panther. Oh, yeah. I yeah. That. But if you blink, you'll miss me. Um, I was in The Grinch. I um, oh, and I'm in a horror God. film that's coming out you called The Grinch. Night. Yeah. What would you play in that? I played a who. a who. I actually had a what? A who? A who? What? A what? A who? A what? Where? Um, <laughs> and then I have a horror film coming out. Well, what is that called? It's called The Night Watchman. And you play? I play a woman who becomes. <laughs> wow. By the way, you did a movie with my cameraman, my director Brent. He looks familiar. Was it a porn? <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's on YouTube. Uh, that, well, there you have it. What did we do? We did the, uh, the <laughs> Twilight Zone thing with George Gaffney. Uh, we went, we were out in Jersey. We did the uh, abortion. Thing. That's right. Yeah, oh, yeah. my God. Like, I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I just say abortion, and that was perfect. I know what you're talking about now. Right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Why are you leaving me? Why are you going to I L.A.? Know, I know. Because I have, I have to, I have to regain my crowd. <laughs> I want to have your children. Right. Okay. I'll give them to you. <laughs> My tubes are not tied. That's a, somebody. That's wonderful. You get it. Please don't leave. Done. Me. You're incredible. Well, we'll just live together, you know, Thank once you. in a while. Is it a hard legacy? Pardon the expression. Right. Is it a hard legacy to fulfill your father's reputation? You know what? I don't feel I have to. I think he has his own... Like, he, he set a bar for me to do what I do, and now it's for me to take it and make it my own. So I don't feel indebted to that at all. What I feel is I have to be better than. And not better like, I will be a better stand-up comedian. No, I mean, I have to be a better person. That's what he left the legacy for. Wow. Yeah. Is it true that your Jewish mom, yes. this is your birth mom, My birth mother. is an astronomer? She no, yes, she is. And and one astrologer, astronomer, astronomer. She's won awards from NASA. 
She works a 60 inch and a 20 inch telescope. She just got back. Oh, <laughs> right? 60 inch, right? She's amazing. She's a brilliant, remarkable woman. Yeah. Especially because she had you. She did. She was so smart. She could have given me up, and she kept me. <laughs> oh. Right? So you definitely come from a father who was a stand-up comedian. Yes. The and best. Yeah. And, yeah. and also, I heard he was a singer. Is that he true? He was. He started off as a cabaret singer. Yeah, you can find him singing on YouTube, and he's amazing. Here in New York? <laughs> I don't know where. What? No, it was Peoria, Illinois, because I think he was 20 years old. It was like, not on Ed Sullivan, but it was one of those shows. Oh. And he's singing. Isn't that incredible? Then he decided to become a comedian actor, right? Yeah. Because people. Actor, so, comedian. I think, I think someone told him to shut up and tell some jokes, is what happened, and he never sang again. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you guys having a good time? Yeah. I'm so lucky. So these guys, um, Especially Jerry. Jerry I've worked with since um, I did my first off-Broadway show, Fried Chicken Latkes at the Actors Woo! Temple. Yeah! Jerry was one, of the, was one of the first musicians I worked with. And then slowly and surely as I was then picked up by the National Black Theater up in Harlem to do my show again off-Broadway legitimately, which is lovely, I, I had the wonderful pleasure of meeting Russell and Zach who came on to play. And I'm so blessed and lucky that I have guys like this in New York City. flirt with because they have other people in their lives. <laughs> but I can dream. I can dream. <laughs> yeah, but you can play with them. I can play. I do. I play with them exactly. In a whole different way because I'm mentally stimulated. <laughs> right? Sapiosexuality. Sapiosexuality, if anyone knows what that means, let's it up. It's very hip. Very hip. It means I'm, I get turned on in the brain. <laughs> and these guys definitely, when they play, mm, <laughs> I go home ready. <laughs> but that's what toys are for. <laughs> you don't talk back, you put them in a drawer, it's a lovely thing. You should try that, because when you're married, it will save your marriage. <laughs> so, no, you gotta get it good, but trust me. Trust me, you want a little something when he's away. I'm just saying. You know, tuck it in the drawer, a little mm, rabbit, <laughs> quick, easy. <laughs> Fresh, honey, keeps you fresh too. <laughs> what? Did I say something wrong? No. Thank you. I don't think so. No. <laughs> the man that's lucky to really keep me and get me—he's in for a treat. <laughs> I don't know. There's something that happens when women turn 47. It's like this chemical thing. I don't know what it is. I don't think I've ever been sexual in my life, but all of a sudden something happened, and it was like my boobs seemed to go pop up, right? And it was like. Like my vagina got tighter, like something happened. So I'm ready. <laughs> the jeans, what kind of jeans? Mom jeans? No, you're wearing the tight jeans. The tight jeans and your butt sticking out? I know. I've been trying to get that butt like Nicki Minaj, but my daughter was like, she looks like she has a cement back there, so. Well, she does. <laughs> cement, that is. Alright, here we go. <laughs> This is a great way to segue into this song, right? <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to do a more time that thing. <laughs> Sorry. I thought I told you he'd be home soon. Couldn't help myself. You're too good to be true. Fall short each time. Every time he ain't here, you and your charms creep closer, closer and near, like a fool to fire. I fall with my pride and all, like a bomb. For explosion taken by your call, you're the wiser one disguised from greed, and I'm just a child who belongs on her knees. Stay. 
want me now yeah, yeah. Since I don't need you What legacy did your father leave the world? He left the legacy of, of being a truth teller and um, and to speak your mind and not be afraid of it at a time when he could speak your mind and not be afraid of it. He really blended people together in the truth, which I think is kind of interesting. He was colorblind, wasn't he? In terms of, you know, terms, casting, uh, right. in terms of acting. He was. I mean, Pryor's Place was one, you know, one of the first... Um, the Pry a Richard Pryor show was one of the first that had like a that kind of multicultural. Was that on ABC? It was NBC. Wow. You know, canceled it after four shows because he came out naked. <laughs> what happened? He came out naked. He came out naked. Well, I think he was in a bodysuit because NBC was saying you can't do this, do this, and I think the statement was so I'll come out with nothing. Wow. You know, and you know he was always very profound as well. What about the rumors about him? You know, and drugs. They're true. <laughs> Drugs yeah. are true, right? Yeah. He told, talked about it on stage. It was no secret. You know? That's what's so funny. It's like, he. I think he would be appalled by Facebook and Twitter because he just told it like it was. He was like, really? I don't need someone, you know? He would just be appalled by it. They yeah. did call him or term him shake and bake pie. What was that about? That I don't know. And I, yeah. I, I take offense to that. I take <laughs> offense right? to it too. Right? A holes, he was, yeah, a holes, right? He was <laughs> a legend. He was a legend, and I, you know, look, every name me one celebrity that hasn't done something that's not okay in their lives, and I think when you're that that way, you know, at that time in that era, it was common. Every look, everybody did it. <laughs> unfortunately, how old was he when he passed? He was sixty-five. Oh, of what? I know, right? A multiple sclerosis. Oh, that's right. My right. God. Yeah. Oh, how horrible. Yeah. And marriage, I think that killed him too. Yeah. Which is <laughs> Jewish wife. No, she wasn't Jewish. <laughs> see, that'll kill you. Right? <laughs> right? Anyway. Going on, where yeah. can we see you next? You can see me next in Los Angeles, performing at different um, different clubs. And, um, yeah. You're not leaving. Why are you leaving New York? I got to go. I got to go to Hollywood. You're so gorgeous. Why <laughs> unbeautiful? Why unbeautiful? Why unbeautiful? <laughs> that's my new character. That's, I'm serious. I'm gonna create a whole character. Her name is Vivian, and that's how she's gonna be. Vivian. Thank you, darling. I'm so happy to be here. I love the theater. One day I'll come back to New York when you I have a man in a fur coat. Uh, you're <laughs> leaving New York and yes. <laughs> unbeautifying the city because your shining star uh, keeps know, this. So Keeps the city so gorgeous. You're so lovely. You. I'm oh just gonna. Uh, <laughs> me too. I love you. Thank you. I love Happy you too. To see more movies or what? You can. Well, like I said, the Night Watchman's coming out hopefully by October. I hope by October because it's a horror film. What about a Broadway musical? Uh, right. Please. Please. Can I play opposite Bette Midler in on um, what? Right. Ma what? What? I'm like Mame. Hello, Dolly. Right. How do you feel about a parallel to Bette Midler? How do I, f I've been, people say like, you're like a young, Bet which is funny. And people I say that you're a young Bed Midler, yeah. right? Why? Which is funny because I don't think I'm that much younger than she is. But, um. You're younger. Younger. More beautiful no, and more younger. funny. You know what? She, she is one of those people, like when you know when you have that star you want to meet, like the star that got you into doing what you were doing, that's her for, that's, she's that for me. So 
Now for me, this song leads beautifully. Thank you, thank you. This song leads beautifully into this song, which is almost the end of the songs. We have it. Because I love, we can start. We can start, I'll just go. So I love, I love listening to, to song, to singers like Jill Scott. Yeah. Love Jill Scott. Do people know who Jill Scott is? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I love, I love Erica Badu. People know what Erica is, right? Because that's kind of like my daughter. Right? Lauren Hill. All, I love, first of all, I love the spoken word. The spoken word, spoken word, spoken word. I don't know that why they have to repeat things a hundred times, but they do. And so, this is like, kind of like my homage to that in terms of love. Because I think a lot of times, you know, we meet someone, we meet someone, we meet someone, and we, we have that thing for them, right? And I call it pheromones, because they have a smell, we have a smell, and we unite together. And you know how you know it's pheromones, because your friend says, how the heck did he get her? Right? Or he says, how the heck, right, did she get him? But there's a coming together of the minds, a coming together of the minds. And recently, recently in my life, there have been so many men that I love. Because I'm delicious, diva. Yeah. I just remind you, vicious, vicious, vicious. And so, I like guys that are creative. But they're always B-R-O-K-E, broke.
when your daughter grows up, do you want her to be in this business? I want her to be whatever she wants to be, but I prefer if she's a scientist. She's really smart and good at math. Good for you. I know, right? And you talked about getting remarried on stage. Yeah, one day it will happen. I don't know when, but it'll happen. Will you marry me? Sure. Let's do it right yeah, now. Really, I love you so thank much. Thank you. I'm to say I'm gonna cry. Yay. Love you. Mm, you are the yeah, best. Thank you. Tell me about your outfit before. My outfit is done by Macy's. <laughs> On the rack. And the hair. Right? The hair is myself. <laughs> and the lips. The lips, all me. Mac, but Mac Cosmetics. <laughs> Look, right? It's and me. The glasses. And the glasses are, you know, Vision Works. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love you so much. And your band was kick ass. Thank you. Kicking ass. Yes, I know. Thank that's you. What it's about. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rain Pryor, and I just performed at Iridium Jazz Club, and I'm here on Barry Z. You're a little too bad, aren't you? <sighs> yeah! Do some of these. Right on. Right. Hey! That's right, that's right, we bad, huh? <laughs>